in the introduction to Maya Angelou's coming-of-age autobiography, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. It's 1931, as three-year-old Marguerite Johnson, nicknamed Maya, is unable to recite her Easter poem in church. The action begins as Maya and her four-year-old brother Bailey arrive in the small country town of Stamps, Arkansas, to live with their grandmother, Mama Henderson. Mama runs the general store in the African-American section of Stamps with the help of her disabled son, Uncle Willie. In the rising action, after four years with Mama in Stamps, Maya and Bailey are taken to St. Louis to live with their lively, glamorous mother who works in gambling parlors. When the eight-year-old Maya is sexually abused and raped by her mother's boyfriend, Mr. Freeman, he is subsequently murdered, and the confusion and shock of the traumatic experience sends Maya into withdrawal and total silence. Maya and Bailey are sent back to Stamps, and Maya slowly recovers with the help of Mrs. Flowers, who connects with Maya through their shared love of literature. When a white employer, Mrs. Cullinan, tries to rename her, Maya takes action and gets fired. Eventually, at age 10, Maya makes her first friend, Louise Kendricks. After Maya graduates eighth grade, she has a direct experience with racism when a white dentist, Lincoln, refuses to treat her. Maya and Bailey soon go to California to live with their mother. Maya's father's girlfriend, Dolores, physically attacks Maya, and Maya runs away. In the climax of the novel, Maya gains self-respect while living in the junkyard, which turns out to be an unexpectedly positive experience. In the falling action, with her mother's support and encouragement, Maya pursues a job, and her persistence pays off. She becomes, at age 15, the first African-American female streetcar conductor in San Francisco. Bailey moves out at age 16 to live on his own. And Maya is just eight months away from graduating high school when she gets pregnant from a one-time sexual encounter. Following Bailey's advice, she hides her pregnancy in order to stay in school and get her diploma. In the resolution, Maya graduates from high school and gives birth to a son, both frightened and delighted to take on her new role as a mother. Those closest to Maya Angelou are the central characters in her autobiography, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. Maya's coming-of-age journey involves struggles with feelings of insecurity and abandonment, and the challenges of racism and discrimination. Maya is traumatized by abuse and rape at age eight. Friendship, kindness, and her own love of books help to pull her out of her withdrawal. Maya embarks on her own personal challenge to racism. Bailey is a year older than his sister Maya. Intelligent, sensitive, and quick-witted, racism and the social codes required by segregation make no sense to him. Eventually, Bailey's strong emotions about his mother erupt into teenage rebellion, and he moves out to be on his own at age 16. Mama, Maya's grandmother, owns and runs the general store in the African-American section of Stamps, Arkansas. She's very religious and a pillar of the community. Mama is caring but strict, not inclined to talk about feelings or emotions. Vivian Baxter is Maya's mother. She's divorced from Maya's father and has a live-in boyfriend, Mr. Freeman. Vivian is glamorous and likes to sing and dance. Her mothering style is much more lenient than Mama's. She's a competent provider and a caring, supportive parent who treats Maya with love and respect. Uncle Willie is disabled as the result of a childhood accident. He has limited use of his left side, and even with a cane, walking is difficult for him. He lives at home with Mama and helps out at the store as much as he can. Uncle Willie sometimes uses whipping to enforce discipline. Mrs. Flowers is considered an aristocrat in stamps. Maya admires her intelligence, her gentle ways, and the fact that she uses proper English. When, a year after her rape, Mrs. Flowers reaches out to Maya through their shared love of literature, she introduces Maya to the power of the spoken word, motivating her to memorize and recite poetry. And she gently advises Maya about tolerance and self-acceptance. Daddy Bailey is Maya's father, handsome, outgoing, conceited, and self-centered. He puts on airs, but he's really just a kitchen worker who lives in a trailer park. He makes a surprise visit to Stamps when Maya is seven. He's a stranger to the children, someone who's self-centered and who never fulfilled his potential. The caged bird, the Easter dress, the blue conductor suit, and the doll are the most significant symbols in iconic poet and artist Maya Angelou's coming-of-age autobiography, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. 
The caged bird, of the book's title, symbolizes Maya herself, caged in by bars of racism, self-doubt, and lack of opportunities. In the Dunbar poem, the caged bird sings for freedom, just as Maya seeks freedom to follow her dreams. The caged bird might also represent other characters, such as Uncle Willie, who struggles with his disability. Or Daddy Bailey, who was never able to achieve the life he wanted for himself. Young Maya views the Easter dress with the hope that it will magically transform her into a blonde, blue-eyed, white girl who's loved and admired by everyone around her. It represents her lack of self-acceptance and foreshadows the struggle that's ahead of her. The blue conductor suit represents Maya's attainment of self-acceptance. It signifies she can identify a role for herself in society, pursue it, and attain it. It also represents her pride in being an African American and in standing up for her rights. After all, she is the first ever African American streetcar operator in San Francisco, and she pulls off this incredible feat at the tender age of 15. On top of that, she's a young girl. Finally, the doll is a symbol of Maya's early struggle with self-acceptance. It's also a symbol of her abandonment. A Christmas gift sent to her by her mother, whom she hasn't heard from in years. The doll makes Maya realize that her mother is a stranger to her. Maya has moved on from those early fantasies about being white, but her absent mother has no idea who Maya really is now. Racism, names and identity, the power of words, and community are the key themes in I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. The theme of racism is woven throughout Maya Angelou's autobiography. Young Maya struggles for self-acceptance and self-confidence in the 1930s South, efforts complicated by racism and segregation. It's difficult for her to achieve self-confidence when racist attitudes and policies tell her that, for reasons she doesn't understand, she's considered somehow inferior because of the color of her skin. Racism defies reason for a child trying to make sense of the world. Maya, who's born Marguerite, wants to reject her names and identity as an African-American. After a few years with her grandmother, Maya identifies with her African-American family and community. When, at age 10, she takes a job in a white woman's house, Maya refuses to allow the woman to give her a new name. By pursuing the job of streetcar conductor in San Francisco, Maya shows she's self-confident enough to challenge the system of discrimination as a proud African-American. The power of words is a central theme to the writer. When Maya is dealing with abandonment as a child, she turns to books for solace and companionship, sharing her love of reading with her brother Bailey. Maya attributes so much power to words that she comes to believe her words cause the death of her rapist. Fearing that evil will escape her if she speaks, she becomes silent and withdrawn for almost a year. Mrs. Flowers, a kind, insightful neighbor, taps into Maya's love of books to draw her back into the world. Lastly, there's community. Maya starts out life with a feeling of displacement when she's sent to live with her paternal grandmother in the segregated country town of Stamps, Arkansas. She struggles to fit in and feels like an outsider in the community. Later, living with her mother and raucous extended family in St. Louis is a far cry from Stamps, and going back to Stamps after her rape is a relief to Maya. Later in California, she gains the sense of community she'd been searching for. Living with homeless teens opens her eyes to the importance of acceptance and tolerance in any community.